Hey guys, so I just went to a book sale and usually there's an annual book sale but because of COVID they just had a mini one and the annual one has been postponed until November. But I did spend 20 bucks and I got a good amount of books. Um, one of the things was a bag of books that you don't know what you're getting. So that's the majority of my books. So I'm going to show you what I got. So first one is The Cat's Table by Michael... Dante. I'm not sure if I pronounced that right. And it seems like there's a theme of um, these are all fiction books and they take place around the world. So this one seems to be about um, about a ship from England in 1950s. An 11 year old boy is put on it. Um, I don't really know much about it at all except for what I've read on the front cover here. And that's how I like to keep things. So that's one of them. We got The Deep Blue Sea for Beginners by Luann Rice. It says, In a place where dreams begin, theirs may come true at last. There's this one. And the little quote things on the back say, um, this is a heart tugger about a reunion of mother and her two daughters who've been separated for 10 years due to a disturbing secret. A story of healing, a terrible rift that gives hope to the reader. And that's that. And then we have The God of Small Things by Arudati Roy. This is a winner of the Booker Prize. And this book takes place in India. And it says, A work of highly conscious art, like a devotionally built temple, the God of Small Things builds a massive interlocking structure of fine, intensely felt details. And the author weaves her bold and startling narratives in sequence of luminously rendered scenes. Remarkable. So I'm looking forward to this one. Most of these authors I've never heard of before, and so I'm really stoked about that. Then we have The Elephanta Suite by Paul Thoreau. And it says, thought-provoking, beautifully paced by turns, moving, sexy, and disturbing. That's what this one looks like. And this one says, brilliantly evocative. The author shows us how India, with its furious intensities, its gift for confrontation, and its quirky mix of dusty British terms and the latest American ambitions might be made for him and his ironic pen. Um, full of lovely, lively writing we have come to expect of him, whether as portraitist of a journeys and places or as a writer of fiction. That's that one. And these books are a pretty good size too. This one's under 300 pages, so that's good. Then we got Mr. Pip by Lloyd Jones, winner of the Commonwealth Writers Prize for Best Book and a finalist for the Man Booker Prize this one here and this one the little blurbs here say a brilliantly nuanced examination of the power of imagination literature and reinvention it is a powerful and humane novel and it says here we are transported into the mind of a child discovering the power of words imaginations and Charles Dickens for the first time we do not know how we made this journey, but therein lies the illusion. We are reminded that books can be as surely as Mr. Pip is magic. So that's pretty cool. And then we have The Known World by Edward P. Jones. This is a winner of the Pul Pulitzer Prize. And this one is about slavery, I believe. A black farmer and former slave who falls under the tutelage of William Robbins, the most powerful man in Manchester County, Virginia. And yes, yeah, this is the one about slavery. So that's going to be pretty cool to read about. This is the only author I've heard of from this uh, um, variety pack book thing, which is Mitch Album, The Five People You Meet in Heaven. I read The Timekeeper and I thought it was okay, um, but I did want to give this author another try because so many people love it. So I'm going to give this one a try as well, and it's very short. Um, but this is about a man that dies 
and he goes to heaven and there's five people there that explain to him what the point of his life was. So that's the gist of what I think it's about. And then we got a Pulitzer, no, a Michael Prince Award for Excellence in Young Adult Literature, How I Live Now by Meg Rosoff. This one. And this is a war story. It says it's a survival story, a love story. It's a stunning and unforgettable first novel that captures the essence of the age of terrorism, how we live now. So that's good. And another short one. And then the last one from that uh, unknown um, book bag is Cease to Blush by Billy Livingston. And this is a Global Mail Best Book. And this one is a little bit thicker. It seems to be about this girl that goes to her mother's funeral and she finds out that her mother has lived a second life that's very exotic and sexual. So let's see here. Um, a well-crafted thought-provoking novel about where women's beauty and vanity can take them and how a person's exterior can hide an unknown story. Um, and there's also a book club gu guide to it as well. So that, that would be interesting to look into. Kind of a thicker one. Um, oh no, sorry, I have one more from that bag, sorry. This one's just about a wedding. It's called Come Rain or Come Shine by Jan Caron. It's a Mitford novel, so I guess this is part of a series. So I'll probably read this when I want something to feel good and light, I would expect. I don't know if this is really my genre, but we'll give it a try. Okay, and then the ones I actually picked out. Uh, these were bargain bin books, so you'll see they have uh, the letters BB on them, and that means they were four for a dollar. So the very first one I was really excited to pick up because I remember seeing it on Dee Dee's channel, uh, Brown Girl Reading. I don't really remember what she said about it, but it stuck out in my mind, and I thought for 25 cents I'm going to give it a try. It's Austin Clark's The Polished Ho. And this is the Giller Prize winner, so I'm pretty... I'm thinking it's probably a good one. And this is about... Uh, what is it about? They don't tell you on the back what it's about. I am assuming it's probably about uh, African Americans and maybe slavery, maybe the sex trade. I don't know. Um, if you could give me a blurb in the comments, that would be really helpful. Uh, but don't give away any spoilers, because I just want to know what I'm getting into. But without the story being ruined. And then I picked up uh, Divergent by Veronica Roth. I've read this. I liked it. I picked it up um, for my boyfriend's daughter. And uh, she's a little bit young for it right now, but it's a really good book to read. So I think in a year or so she can read it and she'll enjoy it. I also haven't tried Kurt Vonnegut, so I picked up Mother Night and Cat's Cradle. No idea if I'm going to like these or not, but look how old they are. They have the blue pages. So from what I get, there's a, there's a lot of uh, commentary about society at the time. And the last book I've read and I picked up for Shane again, um, from Game of Thrones by George R. R. Martin. I've read the first four books and then I stopped and then I read watched the TV show and now I know how the TV show is going to end I kind of lost my luster to read the books um, but they were a fun ride and it's been I think I read them in what 2013 so it's been a while so I may read this again just to get back into the series but to me this is like a winter book and then uh, some free books we got. Uh, we've got some Reader's Digest, but they're on the other side of my bed, so I'm not going to reach for them. Uh, my stepdaughter's learning how to crochet, so we got her this little thing on how to make dishcloths. We're also trying to teach her how to cook. And so we got Cooking with Scents. <laughs> and these seem like really easy recipes. Um, this is like from the 80s, so they got like 
Colombian beef stew, uh, lamb stew, oven fried chicken, lasagna, enchiladas, soup. Just easy things that she can get started with. And then, can I reach? Shane picked out these two books. They're two hardcovers. And I haven't heard them. Um, Heart of War by Lucien K. Truscott the Fourth. And the other one he picked up was The Iceman by Philip Carlo. So they could be good. Don't know. Uh, let me know if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them. And I'll talk to you again soon. Okay, thanks. Bye.